All right, I thought it was about time that I actually shared my overall run shoe philosophy of how I personally use shoes and how some of my ultra runners use shoes. In a lot of my videos, you know, I talk about shoes, but I don't, I don't know if I've ever really expressed my overall philosophy and long-term approach with how I view shoes and how I use them as a tool. Um, so we're gonna get going on this. I got some harsh light coming through. Um, I can't remember the last time that I was able to run in shorts and a t-shirt in November in Jackson Hole. And today was one of those days. So we got some harsh light coming this way. Um, hopefully it's not too distracting with how this comes through, but let's get going. So I think it's important to note that um, I, with the publication of Born to Run 2, Chris McDougall and I did partner with Zero Shoes because really just our overall fondness of what Zero Shoes are doing. And they are, they, they call themselves a barefoot company. I hate that term barefoot. I hate the term minimal shoes. I like to use the word natural shoes. A natural shoe in my perspective is something that works really naturally, flexible, allows your feet to do the job, and is just, um, just giving you a little bit of protection for you to be able to run maybe in, in places that you wouldn't be able to run barefoot. So again, something very minimal um, and very natural feeling, allowing the feet, the big toe, the arch to do their job. So that's kind of what I, I, I like to use that term natural running. So when you hear me say natural running, I'm really kind of using that term to refer to the type of shoe and, in, and shoe environment that I'm running in. I think, you know, I, I riff on this in some of the latest videos that sometimes we hear that word barefoot shoes or minimal shoes and it kind of places it in a category that for a lot of runners, maybe they kind of get turned off by that. They're into the super shoes, they're into the high profile, spongy new foam, which, um, and so when they hear that word, barefoot shoes or minimal shoes, they're automatically going to kind of close their mind to its use. And that's what I really want this to come across today is that, and why I use the term natural shoes is that regardless of the runner we are out there, everybody who does running for a different reason, runs different distances and races for different reasons, different abilities, different backgrounds, but every runner out there should want to reap the benefits of what natural running or using a natural shoe can provide you. And this is where it gets sticky because the industry wants a category, the barefoot, the minimal category. Um, it's, it's how we sell things. You look at music. Hey, we sell things in, in, in a category of music, punk rock, rock and roll, hip hop, R&B, everything has a category because it's easier to sell. Um, and that's why we get this barefoot um, category. But again, if, if we broaden it to the natural running, now everybody maybe can be open-minded about what that can do for them. And it doesn't have to be this all or nothing approach. It doesn't mean, hey, I'm a barefoot runner and that's all I do. No, I use natural running as a tool to allow me to get stronger. And that's the purpose of how I see and I, how I use a shoe, is that using a natural shoe should be a tool. And where it gets tricky, most runners aren't able to run in a natural shoe for more than five or 10 minutes at a time. Because and this is a huge opportunity for you to improve your running because they lack the strength to be able to support and stabilize themselves with the feet, the arch, the big toe, the calves, all the reasons why people get injured running barefoot, um, that's because they lack the strength. So this is where it gets tricky. There's not one approach for everybody. Okay, we have to see this as a tool. It's almost see this as like the weight room, the strength room, where most every runner out there is not doing the same type of strength training if they're doing it at all okay and that's my point is that if we start to see a shoe like this a zero drop minimal very flexible shoe as a strength tool 
to allow us to get stronger as a runner, now we can choose how to use it relative to our own personal strength capability. And that's the key is that how strong are you? How capable are you in running in a shoe like this? Because the potency of running in a shoe like this, the strength that a shoe like this provides is amazing. And we need to start seeing it as that rather than, hey, this is the only shoe you're going to use. This is the only shoe you're going to race in. No. Okay. That's not the case. This is a tool. And then you pick the shoe that you need relative to your strength levels for the race you're choosing, for the terrain you're choosing, for the distance you're choosing. And that could be a, a variety of shoes that you use for your racing for your long run. So one way to think about how this works is that you're all familiar with baseball. And think about that batter who's in the warm-up circle, the batter's circle, warming up while someone else is at bat. What do they do? They put a donut size weight on their bat and swing the bat while they're warming up. And what this is doing is making the bat heavier. So what's the purpose of this? The purpose is to make it heavier while you're warming up, while you're swinging, taking your practice swings, and then right before you're going to plate to bat, you take that weight off. What does this do? It makes the bat feel so much lighter. So much lighter, you can swing it faster. This is how natural running and using a shoe as a tool works. Is that you wear these natural shoes some of the time, you're gonna develop this strength. You're using your muscles more. You're using your foot muscles more. You're using your toe as a stabilizer, your arch as a stabilizer, you're engaging your calves. All this is creating wonderful strength. And then you pick the shoe that you need for longer training days and longer races. And this allows you to be so much stronger in the shoe of choice for your races. And eventually, maybe you can even come down in your shoe stack height choice for racing, giving you that more natural feel. And that gets me into my approach, okay? So what I'm running in is the zero shoe. This is the, this is the trail shoe. You can kind of see the lug pattern, okay? And this is, this is the road shoe I use, okay? So for a lot of the time, most of the time, I'm running in a shoe like this to develop strength, efficiency, strength endurance. Every step becomes a form of strength training. And what this then does is it allows me to pick a shoe like this that gives me a little bit more comfort in the mountains to go all day. So my goal is to just continue to improve and increase my strength levels to run more and more and more in a shoe like this. From a strength standpoint, from a strength training standpoint. So it's not any different than our philosophy of how we use a long run. If you haven't run for a long time, you're not gonna go out and do 20 miles, right? You're gonna start with 30 minutes. And that's, that's my approach with this shoe. You start where your strength and your ability is and build from there and spending more and more and more time in a shoe like this to build strength. Okay, so what I miss in a shoe like this, I, I live in the Tetons, I live in Jackson Hole. Our trails are super, super rugged. We've got super, super loose rock, very jagged, lots of vertical, and this requires some protection. So. On my long days, when I want to run faster, when I'm doing a vertical type of run that is very technical, I need a little bit more protection than what this is providing me. So I go to a shoe that's like this. Okay, so th this, this is kind of my all day shoe. If I was gonna run 100 miles right now, this would be the shoe I pick. And what happens, I build my time in a shoe like this 
and then I throw on this, this feels like a maximal shoe for me. It gives me all day protection, gives me all day comfort. And this is really an industry standard minimal shoe. This is like a 20 millimeter stack height. This is still zero drop, but for most runners, this is a very, very minimal shoe that's recommended to not run more than maybe two hours. But after I spend a lot of time in this, I throw this on for my long runs. This feels like a maximal cushion, but I'm still getting the natural ability of the shoe, flexibility, the natural properties that an industry standard minimal shoe will give me. I don't feel like I'm missing much in running like this from a natural running standpoint. But the key was my feet get used to this most of the time and then I toss this on and now I feel like, I, geez, I could go forever. It feels so good. It gives me the protection and comfort I need, okay, for long days in the mountains because these mountains are very, very rugged. On days that I want to run with a lot of vertical gain, faster and very technical, I go to a shoe that's very light, very flexible, but now it has a little bit more rock protection. This has a rock plate, it has good lugs, so I get the grip and rock protection I need, and it gives me a little spring and be able to run a little bit faster over technical terrain, where is going back to my real natural shoe, since it doesn't have as much protection, I, I tend to be able, I have to dance around technical train a little bit where I'm not able to run as fast. So when I'm not running very fast, I'm in this. When I wanna run fast and perform, I'm more in a shoe like this. Another option I have is an old Trust and True Solomon S-Lab, four mil drop, again, good protection but still very flexible, still very close to the ground and allows me the protection I need, but still the agility I can get from a low to the ground shoe running very fast in the mountains. Another one I liked this year was the On Peak 3. I, I hate the heel. You know, I could do away with the heel, but again, when I'm running vertical, my heel very rarely touches the ground. So now I've got good rock protection. This actually has a plate in it which I like, um, but it's super minimal, super low to the ground, so I get protection, and I'm able to really run really fast and be still agile um, around technical terrain, running up mountains. So these have been kind of my um, go-to fast, fast in the mountains, uphill, technical terrain shoes, the On Peak 3. This is the Merrill Skyfire 2, maybe an one of the most underrated shoe of the year. Um, it is a six mil drop, um, but again, when I'm running vertical, my heel is very rarely touching the ground, so it's, it's like it's zero drop. I don't even notice the six mil drop. Super, super lightweight. Again, has a plate, but has super, super great lugs, Vibram lugs, and it allows me again to run super super fast over very very technical terrain and that's the key the difference between these two that's 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 what i wanted to spell out with my philosophy of how i use shoes and i see it as a lifelong pursuit is that my goal is to continue to use a shoe like this longer and longer and longer more and more and more so i continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger and i wish i could go out all day in this okay and maybe that's the goal eventually um, but I do need a little bit of protection with our mountains, and that's where I, I go with some, something like the Innovate Trailfly G270. So with that, how does this apply to the athletes I train and the ultra runners I train? No differently, really. Just like I look at my athlete as an individual, where they're coming into their, their background as far as racing, and their ability, I look at their ability to use a natural shoe as a tool. You know, what's their strength levels? And we then, some, some aren't interested, okay? And we just, we work with that. We, we work with what they're gonna use on the race day and that, that's all they, they focus on. 
Others have maybe, maybe it's a budgetary thing. I hate having people spend so much money on shoes, but those who are willing or interested and able to have a higher budget for shoes, they, they dribble in, you know, more of a natural shoe for what I call strength runs. Strength runs are when we go out nice and easy, running in a shoe like this. Again, zone one, maybe zone two, super easy where we're just developing strength and foot strength placement and again depending on the individual it really depends on how much time they're spending in a shoe like this but then they're always picking a race shoe that's going to allow them to go the distance um, whether it's you know 50k 50 miles 100k 100 miles it really kind of depends again on strength levels i'll have some athletes that can really race 100 miles in something like this, they're strong enough where um, others, they might need just a little bit more of a shoe, but we see it as a process. We see it as a strength process. And that's what I hope you guys start to see. Shoe is a tool, the shoe is a strength tool, and we just look to get stronger over time. Better and better and better. But I wanted to get this out there so you guys really understood where I'm coming from this from a personal athlete and a personal running standpoint and a little bit of how I use it with my athletes. It's not, there's just not one way to tell you how to do it, okay? It's just start to dribble in, phase in a little bit of natural running, see how your body feels. Go for, go for a 10 minute run, see how your body feels the next day. If it's super sore, hey, you're, you're at your limit for a while and just let that be, um, the the measurable that you use to how how much you start to phase in it and then maybe it's you're you're using this once or twice a week maybe it's for your recovery runs maybe it's just for your easy runs so that's where the a little bit of self coaching has to come in but overall start to see how potent natural running can be for any type of runner out there okay it doesn't take much it doesn't take more than 10 15 20 minutes of a run to have massive strength gains, okay? 20, 30 minutes in a shoe like this will overmatch anything you're doing in a gym, okay? Ask yourself, if you're not able to run into a shoe like this for more than five or 10 minutes at a time and you're still doing strength training, you might look at the type of strength training you're doing and maybe start to have the mindset of the most important strength we can do is possibly what we do with our shoe choice. All right, that's all I got for you today. Throw down the questions and over and out from Jackson Hole, Born to Run World. Shoot.